Uh, hey, before we run into this video, I just want to really tell you guys, please subscribe to my channel. It comes my notice that, unfortunately, only 25% of the people who watch my stuff are subscribed. So if you are, and please consider if you want to see more really dumb stuff from me, right? Take care, guys. You know, perfection do come in many flavors. Some come in the jawline of Pokémon. And others come in, well, the peak perfection of predicting hacks, like me, and like no other really. But very few are a, such a perfect story as Elegasam and Gengar. And that's my cat. But let's not talk about that. Uh, honestly, like these two mods have forever, since introduction of Generation 1, just been Apex Special Offensive Glass Cannons, they are mods that have kept on coming, never wavered, and this is one of those videos will, will just be a love letter to both of them as they're finding ways of reinventing them to be very plausibly more viable than others. So I kind of want to fill their gen generation journey and why generation 8 is so big for them when it comes to whether or not they got buffed. Because generation 1, they were absolutely the best mods, there really was nothing else. I like Sam. Perfection, psychic, a furbishing chance of dropping special, and yeah, like it hit like a truck. Really, the only thing kind of holding it back was Chansey, and that was at times. You get a special defense drop on that, and it's no longer really soaking hits at all. And Gengar having a good typing. Uh, keep it away, those Snorlax's body slams, Tauros body slam, hyper beams immunity. That was a key thing. They're both really speedy, and their speed, like for years one, they were just blisters they were they were just out they were the sonics of the generations basically and that speed here that the bow represent 110 and 130 for the longest time were individual high apex speeds is 110 is actually something that was debated in generation 5 to be the landmark of what a pokemon speed need to be to be offensive until then everything else before that was basically yeah it outspeeds most of things and one of the third ones, Alexam, yeah, it is by default a very, very strong speedster, and really nothing like it has ever come since. Or it has, but it really hasn't been relevant for the discussion of this individual video. Generation 2 introduced two things Elemental Punches, two to both of them. All of a sudden, they could hit individual threats very, very easily. Another possible nerf was that special attack and defense was nerfed. They were largely not affected by it, but yeah, their special defense definitely aren't on par as it hired a special attack. It really doesn't matter in hindsight of things as there's still glass cannon no matter how we turn it. And the other thing that happened that I think is a big deal was um, that pursuit and the dark type, but more so the pursuit was happening. Um, the reason for that was because pursuit was basically given to Ranitar to say the very least. An opportunity of win the situation. It resisted and was immune to the psychic and ghost. So, and they have no finding moves of really parry it. So, there could always be a scenario where with Runner comes in and you say, Yeah, game over. Hard, it's hard to switch out against a Pokemon that can pursue trap you or crunch you. And pursuit are probably able to do, you know, a two hit kill anyway. So, it's either you want to land a small head in or just lose your mana completely. And Generation 2, while rough, was basically just a way to balance the mods themselves, because Alagasam and Gengar, still extremely dangerous. <laughs> Generation 3, um, Alagasam to an extent got less good, but rather the introduction of more efficient mods that got really better. Alagasam was still just as good and still OU, but there are factors to make Alagasam less plausible or good to use. Mainly its abilities of absolutely not helping it at all. With something like Synchronoids, we're able to transfer ability or status effects if you got any or render focus. Um, but the one thing that really made it harder for Alega Sam was that all of a sudden Sandstorm, the Tyranitar, basically got a special defense increase, which made it even more impossible for Alega Sam individually to break Tyranitar and absolutely lose strength at it. One thing Gengar got was definitely not something to alleviate the pursuit trap in, but it got levitate, and all of a sudden, you don't have a psychic weakness. And Gengar was, in this generation, pretty much just defining itself as due to explode, it has 
a broad and variety of options and moves it can pull off. It could be a suicide lead, it could be a sweeper, and it even could capitalize on focus punch to be able to ruin a Gengar switching, or even on a scenario where a passive Blissey would be able to actually hurt it quite a lot with something like substitute of focus punch. So it was a dangerous area for Gengar, as due to all of its immunities, it all of a sudden have a a plethora of opportunities of really just making stuff very sour for the majority of the scenarios. Generation 4 introduced something that they both needed, which was actually a possible um, split on physical attacks and special. All of a sudden, Ghost actually was a special move, which could actually be extremely dangerous as Gengar has now proper stabs in both Sludge Bomb and Shadow Ball, being able to capitalize on its you know, it's typing without going physical. And with the Boca Focus Blast, which was a physical, well, it is a physical move or a fighting move, I mean, that are special. All of a sudden, yeah, there is a scenario here where Tyranitar, of course, wins against him, but they're not going down a fight. Um, and Algasam, around 60% HP, actually, if Focus Blast hits, can kill it straight on, even with that special defense degree. So all of a sudden, they hide options. Unfortunately for like a Sam though, while it was still good, like I said before, there were scenarios around it that make it less desirable. And Metagross, of course, was an overall better psychic type, it kind of you know, fill that voice in the tree. There's a lot to do with the steel typing being able to actually parry with well, stuff that Alex simply could and it's a psychic type. And you don't want to have a dual psychic type either. And also in year 4 due to U-turn, yeah. All of a sudden, we have momentum-based moves that actually could ruin it. So, if there's... And then, of course, Choice Scarf. Basically, your speed was a factor. Um, till Generation 4, Alexander was pretty much always outspeeding, but that was no longer the case if the opposing well opponent was actually doing so. And also, A-Sylph. A-Sylph, in general. Phil the Void, as Alexander 2 is a suicide lead. So, Alexander, while good, still not had close-up opportunities as um, its other sucky brethren, but that was sure to change Generation 5 with Magic Card introduced. Magic Card is one of those weird things, it really isn't like the best ability out there, but for certain Pokemon it makes so much sense and it actually just recreates their viability completely, and um, Magic Card was definitely doing that, as all of a sudden, you know, the glass cannon aspect of um, Alakazam was kind of alleviated to be a guarantee to it kill if you wanted to with Focus Sash, as you were not hit by Hassets alone. So it due to Magic Card, of course, well, making you immune to those very things. And another aspect that was probably even more dangerous, if you ask me, was Life Orb Magic Card. You were no longer taking a 10% HP of your every move with Magic Card, which basically meant that Alakazam all of a sudden was a powerhouse and a force to be reckoned with. It already was, but now we're standing in a Pokemon that was even stronger. And absolute and owe you for that very reason. And Gengar, just good as ever. Like, there is, from here on, there are really no factors since Generation 3 of how good <laughs> Gengar is. It is possibly here the very best mons there is, as it just, everything it stands for are good. <laughs> and it's a phenomenal mon. So you figured eventually. They're getting it worse, right? Well, now Generation 6, that it wasn't happening. Both got Mega Forms, one of them being so strong they had to ban it uh, due to their Shadow Tag. So Mega Gengar was a thing for like a few days. Uh, but the main buff to Gengar here was that due to its Poison Typing, it actually could deal with head-on the very best introduced Typing of, well, 10 years, and that was the Fairy Types, which all of a sudden was the absolute best Typing in the game due to being able to well, kill the dragon spams, right? That 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 was the that was the <laughs> definition of what's going on. But being able to be already offensively capable as never before, and being able to pretty much poke holes in every fairy with no issue. And the speediest fairy types uh, there there was was the Mega Deenchi, which actually couldn't on its Mega Evolution outspeed Gengar and could be in a very very unfortunate scenario being to it KO anyway uh, against it. Because, well, while it was rock type, it sure got neutral completely due to its very type. And as far as Alakazam was going, like, regular Alakazam was still extremely good, always going to be, but Mega Alakazam was vastly superior, right? That that That's what it boils down to. It got speed at 150 and a special attack at 170. I mean, come on. 
what's not to like about it. So Alexan was just as good, but it did move to Yu Yu for a time. But it was mainly because Mega Alexan was vastly superior to its form, and it, as it should be. There was really no reason not to use it. Um, but then things started to crumble. And here's where things get interesting. Generation 7. One of the toughest nerfs there is. If one perk of an ability can ever change a Pokemon to be extremely viable, that goes both way in Gengar losing its levitate as it evolves itself into Gengar. At, at the time, I thought it wasn't a big deal, but I do realize now that Gengar, from having opportunities of pretty much eat a Nidoking King and Nidoqueen Queen head on, it now had to be very aware of what it could switch into. There were no, well, ideal scenario matchups. For example, the um, Hippowda, which usually running Earthquake and Toxic, were in theory always walled by Gengar, making it a very scary scenario to be it. Now Hippowda had the opportunity to possibly beat it. And um, it kind of laid on. I did. Like, Gengar was still good and was still, well, OU, because there are scenarios where it absolutely is very good. For example, the Tapus are just ruined by the existence of Gengar, but not having less opportunities and not being able to really deal with some of the Apex, Apex mod, like, you know, Landorus, for example, um, really made it tougher for it. And when it comes to Elegasam, I'll, I'll say it like this. There were things around Elegasam that could have made it very good, but it just it didn't line up in a way that was making sense. Tapulele, um, probably the best introduced psychic type so far, I would say, due to its psychic train ability. Um, that in itself made it by far the best psychic type there is. There was really no reason not to use, um, well, regular, I guess, at least. The train negated, of course, any priority moves, and if you were running yourself scarf, you were really likely to destroy a few things. I mean, there was really nothing like it. It sure hasn't the broader move pool like Alakazam do, but I don't think it needed it. However, we had a lethal combo in Alakaz Mega Alakazam to get boosted by Sunky Terrain <laughs> and of course Zapalele. So Mega Sam was just as lethal as ever, but um, yeah, I think the Zapalele took quite the spot on it. But it turns out that these nerfs were just on work with a perfect storm that was coming. And that was Generation 8. Like, for the longest time here, I wanna, I wanna cover myself in a way that makes sense. Um, I made a video um, almost like two years back now where I defined how great the answer was due to Pursuit and how Generation 8 ruined it. Because the Pursuit is now gone, making its viability to beat the very things that were broken in generation one come full circle with them coming back and learning nasty plot too because why would not that be a thing we now have two pokemons that are not going to ever have to be worried about switching out which means all of a sudden they're no longer sweepers um, there actually are mods that can come in, hit something and get out with no punishment because their speeds here are as strong as ever, like the 1 to 10, 1 to 30, it's still the top speeds, like there is very few outspeeding them, there still are the top 30, and that's quite the feat considered 900 Pokemon all behind them to this very day. So yeah, you, you figure they're getting nasty plot and not being worried about pursuit, yeah, they become the very thing, well, they sought to destroy for almost 20 years ago with Generation 2, they become that very same threat they actively designed against and they're now stronger than ever. Alexam is lethal due to being able to carry Nasty Plot and even Life Orb. That's not a combo you want to deal with. And consider Gengar. Well, I shouldn't go without saying that Ghost, Poison, very good offensive type and you know if you had Levitate 2 it might as well have been broken to get banned for smoke guns. Um, but, but with that said, it even got banned actually in Diamond and Pearl due to its very sheer force of a viability. Um, and that is without the Levitate. Um, Nasty Plot is just that big of a deal when you have a broad move pool and nothing like it. And consider now that Alakazam in, well, now Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl for this video, um, 
<clears throat> it, it is really just the special attacker. There is nothing like it in a very this tier. And it could be very well much so that it is the most broken Pokemon so far when this video is getting done. Hell, I remember myself, you know, when, when I realized Nasp was still going to be a TM for the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I told Pokemon, you know, this is gonna be that mon. There is, this, it's it's not coming. Like pursuit is gone. They're still keeping its buffs. There's going to be repercussions for that type of ability. And quite frankly, like I said, Tyranitar has been it's pretty much the balance of all of it. And now we're in a scenario where th that's no longer a thing. Um, they they you know they started nerfing like a dark type already in generation six with of course. Um, no, they buffed it, I mean, with um, with Dark hitting uh, Steel Cypher of resisted damage. And now they took away Pursuit and a lot of definitions of a, of a Pursuit Trap or something that stagnate and lock down with, you know, the most offensive mods. Like, they can be played and be punished for it. That type of advantage of being able to wall break efficiently has to have a punishment and a drawback. You take that drawback away, and you have now the perfect storm of mons that are, well, the key threats, like I said, that were sought and actively to destroy, and I just think it's great to see these times of buff. Alexam and Gengar do share these videos, because I think their journey are much the same, and they got the same types of opportunities. They are massive threats, perfect Pokemons in so many ways, and I couldn't be happier to say. They buffed them this generation, and they got buffed good. And uh, here is for another, of course, 20 years of Gengar and Elegasam reign. So let's see how long that keeps up. So that's it, guys. Very long video. Sorry about that. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next video of Buffed or Nerfed. Until then, take care, all right? Bye.